Hello and welcome back to another reaction. In this occasion, Wakfu episode 20 of the second season. Last time we saw kind of another filler episode, in this case how my guess is Cleofit now joining their group, joining the, the Brotherhood of the Tofu. And yeah, how... <laughs> How is still the two girls of the original group cannot stand Cleofi? Well, my guess is uh, Eva is really, well, she has to because she is uh, her sister, but Amalia is saying, no, she's a terrible person, she's a brat, etc, etc, etc. So, now that is kind of a useful information because if she just appeared, in the later episodes, without much explanation, yes, we will we all will be asking what the hell is going on, how is she in the group now, why they didn't explain this, and all of that. So yeah, I approve of this. I approve that they give us an explanation as to why she is uh, with them. And no, I wouldn't accept just a simple, oh yes, she's there because, it, well... Uh, out of screen, she just joined them because reasons. Now, we saw that, yes, this was a plan from Pompon and from Ruel and, uh, yeah, of course, Cleofi. And, yeah. But not only that, we saw how poorly, and I mean seriously poorly, uh, Evangeline and Amalia were treated in the last episode. So, yeah. Poor, poor girls, but it was a very funny one. Again, without much of a um, bigger plot. Yes, they need to rescue a little girl, but we, honestly, the little girl didn't didn't look like it was in a lot of danger. Um, they, of course, ended up in a great pirate party. I would love to see that entire party. It wasn't possible, of course. Uh, but yeah, it is, again, a funny episode, a nice transition to what I hope is now a more serious one. Uh, because yes, I really need to know what what will happen with Adamai, what will happen with, with Kilby, what will happen with the rest when they figure out what Kilby did and what Adamai did. So yes, I want to know what is going on and what is going to happen here. I seriously need... To know what is going to happen. Hopefully this is not going to be another uh, kind of uh, filler episode. <laughs> that say, oh no, we're going to have it. Three days of the sea. Doing nothing <laughs> while you're still eating yourself by the insides. Trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Why? Because we are evil and we want our fans to suffer even more. So yeah, hopefully now we're going to see something else. But anyway, yeah, let's better cut all of this and figure it out if they are going to deliver something awesome or not, or another failure, which is, yeah, I just want to know. Anyway, yeah, let's just cut this and watch the episode, shall we? No, I don't think it's the ocean air. What? Okay, seriously? <laughs> We're seeing Titanic now? Come on, if he just screams, I'm the king of the world, yeah. Oh, poor Evangeline, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Holy, what the hell is going on inside that place? Okay, that place is huge. It's bigger than I expected. Son système de fonctionnement dépend entièrement de la cube. Oh. oh, of course he doesn't know about Nox. Yes, yes, yes. Tell him. Yes. 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 
On ne fait pas d'omelette sans casser du dos. Oh, <rire> seriously, man. Viens, Adamaï. Nous allons faire une petite promenade. Ok, this is giving me sad vibes from freaking kill me. Le bal du pays. <laughs> ok, no. There is something suspicious here. Yeah, I'm... This is something weird. J'ai un pouvoir, Adamai. Contrairement à tous mes frères Eliatrop, j'ai en mémoire. Seriously? J'ai les souvenirs de plusieurs minutes. Holy, okay, that. Et j'ai compris depuis bien longtemps que c'était tout. Yeah, this is very dark when you think about it. You, all of your deaths, all your failures. Holy crap! Nous sommes des voyageurs, Adamai. Nous n'avons rien à faire ici. Oh crap, yes! Ce monde n'est pas le monde. Ok, yeah, this is. Anéanti. Le mot est un peu fort. Il sera juste un peu. Yeah, but you are thinking about destroying races upon races. J'aurais beau essayer de vous convaincre, ton frère et toi, vous resterez toujours. Well, yes, because they don't want to kill everybody. What the hell is going on? Okay, yes, I was right when I started to feel bad about this guy. J'aimerais tellement que ça se passe différemment pour une fois. Mais l'histoire se répète à la Oh crap. Borné tous les deux, incapable d'avoir une vision réaliste de ce qui est bon pour notre peuple. So that's why Gorgon never cross him. Oh, of course, he's a next bird of that. Yes, that makes sense. Ça fait un moment que j'attendais ça depuis que vous m'avez délivré. Oh boy. Et Hugo, où tu l'as envoyé L'île des griffes pourpres. Il est parti chercher mon dofus de sauvegarde. Okay. Oh crap, the sister is in the same boat. Yes. Oh. Okay, yeah. Faïris, le puissant et gourmand. Mais j'ai une idée qui va me permettre. Oh. Okay. Que tu le veuilles ou non. Plutôt mourir que d'être. Yeah, this is. Il y a bien pire que le trépas. This is awful, man. Oh crap. Yeah, I have my suspicion in this episode, even in the last episode, but not as big as this one. Holy! Okay, Gilly is a lot more dangerous. Même avec mille ans de plus, tu ne pourrais rien y faire. Il n'y a que ce mot des faïris qui soit capable. Tu parles Oh! Yes! Oh, a trap! Oh, he's a still weakness, perhaps? Oh, so it's kind of true. He needs his dofus. Oh, he's not a fighter. What? Oh, no. What? Okay, what is going on? Holy, okay, that looks cool as hell. Tu es toujours aussi combatif, Adamai. Tu fais la fierté de notre peuple. Okay, this is very exciting. But God damn it, it is copy by surprise. Oh, he's way too fast. Oh. Oh crap! Okay, yes, obviously, yeah, Kildil is going to be very powerful. Oh man! Oh! Okay, yeah, he's a bigger threat, man. Look at that! 
Okay, I wasn't expecting this! No, yeah, of course. Oh! He got his cat? What? Yeah, but this is not a full-grown dragon. Enfin, pas vous. Je parlais de façon générale. Quoi qu'il en soit, j'ai besoin d'un coup de main pour en détruire un gros, un très gros même. Sûrement le plus. Okay, he's getting ready. Yeah, but I don't think it's a pretty flower. This is discussion that I wasn't expecting from this. Okay. Oh, rien du tout. J'ai entendu dire que vous vouliez en parler. Yes. Alors, je peux vous aider en créant. Yes, exactly. He's an adorable trot. Vous feriez ça pour moi. Mais bien sûr. Et avec quel grand plaisir, même. Okay. Yeah, he is an adult. Yeah, this is well crap. Yes, exactly. Even for the demons, this is not going to be. That <laughs> nice guy, Sanathan. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I forget about that. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is... Okay. The very serious talk with, with Pompon in the background. Oh man, that's disgusting. Ça concerne ton frangin, tu n'as aucun souci à te faire. Il est plus fort que nous tous réunis. Écoute, je ne vais rien pouvoir te dire pour ça, Mais si tu veux, tu peux poser ta tête sur mon épaule. Les autres nous verront pas. Et par contre, c'est même pour les plus courageux des aventuriers. C'est Evangeline qui m'a appris ça. Oh, ok, yeah. But man, this is... Ok This is obviously the ending of the episode. It, it's obvious. Yes. Oh no, wait, there is something else! Okay! Oh man! Okay, yeah, but this is. Oh crap, I don't want it to. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there, take the spoilers. Yeah! Okay! I have to say this, I have my suspicions about Kilby in the last episode we saw him, when he just took the Elia cube and ran away. I had my suspicions back then, but not much. I thought he was just going to be an annoyance and said, oh, we need to go out, we need to return to our planet or something along those lines. I thought that was going to happen. Not him turning into full flesh. Villain in this moment. Seriously, I never suspect that. I guess before I guess that he was going to be uh, an antagonist at most. That he wanted to go away to his plan to see if they can rebuild the society there. And yes, he wants to go with Hugo and the rest. That's it. That's what my suspicions were. But not this. Nothing close to this. Anyway, yeah, as always, I want to watch this a second time because, yeah, it really deserved it. And, well, you like my comments. See you in a bit.
Ok, I'm back. I just watched uh, several times the episode, especially the parts with Kilby in it. Uh, the other, I kind of skip it after the second time. Yeah, the second time I watch it in its entirety. Uh, but the third, fourth, and fifth time I watch it, uh, it was only the parts of Kilby. Yeah, those were the most important parts in which I tried to pay the most attention. And yes, I got... Uh, several notes on uh, those parts. But of course, we start the episode very calmly. Uh, there is nothing much going on, uh, especially after the title drop. After the title, we, uh, we saw the scene it, and yet we start with this one. It's way too relaxed for what was uh, waiting for us next. Of course, we saw that it's still Pompon, -pom. it's still, uh, well, seasick, I think there is no other words. He's barfing all over the place. Hell, even the freaking octopus like the call of the barf. I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, he's feeling sick, and this is when we saw kind of a um, possible love triangle. I don't know if it's correctly to call it like that. Perhaps, yes, uh, Cleophy is flirting with a uh, Pompon, but I don't know if Pompon is uh, doing the same. Perhaps he's just uh, behaving like that because, yeah, he's seasick and he, well, somebody else offers a help for you to, well, not be seasick. Yeah, you're going to serve it and you're going to be happy. And yes, we have a recreation of the Titanic scene with, between, uh, well, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. When he's in the freaking end of the gigantic Titanic and screaming, I am the king of the world. So yeah, it's obvious reference to that one. Um, it's a funny one because it's something I wasn't expecting. And it's an odd one because it comes after... I don't know, three times they have been in a boat? Four times they have been in a boat? So yeah, it's weird that they just now are using that image. And even kind of the music in the background sounded like that. But anyway, of course, we saw a jealous Evangeline and a Amelia trying to comfort her. I don't know if it's comforting the right word or perhaps just letting her spill the beans. Because yes, she's really, really angry that, uh, yes, because yeah, she's very jealous of her sister. Amazing! It's the sister who is kind of conquering the heart of uh, of Pompon. Pom. Again, I don't know if it's true or maybe it's my goggle ships that are uh, blocking this. Oh no, they are not getting together or perhaps they are getting together and it's another conflict. I have no idea in this case. But yeah, of course, we saw even angry Evangeline uh, trying to hit her sister or Pompon or both with an arrow. And of course, we hear uh, several noises. In the first viewing, I never, it never occurred to me that that was Evangeline. But in my second viewing, yes, that is Evangeline has, who is making the noise in the cabin. Uh, yes, we're seeing that uh, Hugo is kind of sad thanks to uh, missing his brother. And of course, uh, this little girl, the daughter of the captain, is uh, listening to his story. Uh, this is, of course, a transition because we're not going to hear the story again. We saw said story. We know what is the deal. We know what is going on. Uh, and of course, this is a good, a good transition for what is really important to the plot. And this is when we enter the uh, Senate, which my guess is still the Mount Senate. Of course, uh, we're remembering uh, past episodes uh, before entering, of course, in the main uh, plot of the episode. In the episode in which all of the kingdom reunite in uh, Sadida, it was spoken that the ship was broken, that it wasn't working and it could not be repaired. Of course, now we know that this is a lie, that uh, actually Kilby didn't care about the other races. He just cared about the freaking Elia tropes, or perhaps not even all of them. I'm still not sure about what to think of him. Anyway, yeah, he doesn't want to share anything with the rest of the world. I was completely mistaken when I made that video that, yes, I never thought in that moment that Kilby was uh, trying to grab every single bit of knowledge with, uh, well, just for the Elia tropes. That 
I really thought that he wanted to share. I really thought he was willing to share all this knowledge, especially with the freaking portals that were created by the Eliatrops, in which they are used to transport uh, around this uh, world of 12. This is uh, an interesting twist, because nothing before ever showed you that Kilby was malevolent. He was kind, he was... Um, he he looked friendly, he was tired, of course he was tired, but there was other stuff. And yes, once you saw those episodes, when the information given in this one, yes, it makes sense. The writers of the show really did a bag of job creating the character of Kilby. You never suspect him. I started to suspect him after the episode of the Twelve Kingdoms. I started to suspect him because, yeah, of that look they gave us in the uh, point of the reunion. And because of the fact that, of course, he is tall, the freaking Elia Q. But I never suspect the extent of malice that was inside of Gilby. Okay, I'm going to be there in the end. I'm going to say this in the end because, yes, I need to move forward. Uh, we saw the Elia Cube, of course, uh, putting energy, Wakfu in this case, into the ship, into the Senate. Uh, of course, this is a perfected machine. It's not like uh, it's not like Nox machine. That yes, it was made to be fed by the Elia Cube, but it wasn't designed by an Elia Trop, so therefore it cannot know exactly what is need to be done in order to work, even moving the freaking Elia Cube to another place. Uh, this is, of course, just enough to, well, turn on the lights of the ship. Uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of similar of what, uh, of what, of what Nox was doing before. But yes, he's feeding a machine energy for another reason, of course, but he's feeding the machine. Of course, he's not feeding the machine. What am I saying? He's feeding the LQ. It was the other way around. Yes, of course. Oh, God, I forgot that. Anyway, yeah. And this is when we saw a glance in the personality, in the real personality of Kilby, that he's kind of okay with the method used by Nox. Yes, Nox is a very sympathetic character in the end. Once you understand his history, yes, you understand why he did what he did. He truly believed that uh, he was capable of undoing every single mistake he made. So it didn't matter. If he destroyed the entire life in the entire planet, it was okay because he will just return back in time and everything will be fixed. That was the idea of Nox. Kilbill, on the other hand, isn't like that. Kilbill were given, again, a glance in his personality. He doesn't care. He doesn't know the story of Nox. He didn't know about his existence because he was trapped in this dimension. But here again, we're seeing the malice in Kilbill's eye. Uh, we are uh, returning to this giant place, and of course they keep moving. And again, these scenes are kind of glances into Kill Will's personality. Yes, the excuse is that they need to move to another part of the ship, but we're seeing what Kill Will really is. What is he in his mind? And this is a person who has lived thousands of lives. I don't know if thousands, perhaps it's an exaggeration, but he has lived a lot of lives and he has memories of all those lives. So, this is an interesting concept. He's not, again, comparing it to Knox. He's not like Knox. Knox was a human, uh, even not a magic addict human, that went crazy thanks to the amount of knowledge that was literally thrown in his mind. He went crazy for that, and that's why, in his madness, he thought that the best solution that could be done was, of course, reverse time so far back that he will solve all of his problems. That was a shalor that went completely mad. 
This is an Elliot trope that remembers every single of his life because he has several lives. He remembers thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of knowledge. He is accustomed to this type of knowledge. Hell, he is an Eliatrop. He is one of the owners of the Elia Q. So he hasn't gone mad with the power of the Elia Q because he was. Well, he wasn't shoved in the Elia Q just like Knox. Perhaps in the first time, but I'm still doubting that. I am having my doubts in this one. And my doubts in every single beat that we have seen before. Especially in the episode in which the story of the Elliot Tropes was told. But yeah, they keep moving and they move to the laboratory of uh, Kill Bill. Kill Bill. No, Kill Bill. Kill Bill is... Of course, the movie, sorry. Anyway, yeah, as I was saying, and we saw several species that are extinct. Uh, some of the home planet of the Eliotropes and some of the other planets that they invade and they uh, took energy from. And again, I'm saying everything in the end. We saw very sinister figures, especially with Kilby. And when he fused with the Elia Q. That's when, of course, we saw that he went full on villain. Before that, he wanted to convince uh, Adamai that he she should join his cause. That he should really, it doesn't matter if this world is destroyed because it's not our world, so it doesn't matter. We need to travel. We need to move away from this world and keep destroying world after world after world just to feed the freaking Elia Q. So we can keep moving and moving and moving. Yes, this is a very dark turn in this moment. We saw now the real personality of Kilby. And that's again when he feels when with the Elia Cube is that he, when he went full on villain. And this is something I want to speak. I don't think he has an arm. I never noticed that, that he doesn't have an arm. But now thanks to the shiny arm, I guess it's a whack worm, literally a whack worm, eh, that yes, I noticed that. But yeah, he looks... Okay, my feelings aside is about Kilby. His original design was to lure you in a sense of security. That yes, this is kind of a grandpa, a young grandpa that is, will help you and understand the world around you and that he's a good person because he will share the knowledge and he will be in charge of everything. Yes, he will help you to reconstruct the society and helping the rest of the society around him. Not just his people, but the people around him, the other species. That is the look of Kilby, the original look. That's what I felt when he appeared. It never crossed my mind that he was a betrayer or something along those lines. No. Of course, the design, once he fused with the Elia Cube, that's another business. Yes, it looks cool as hell. I love the design of this villain. I really like this design. He's infused with Wagfu. My guess, again, he's able to control the power of the Elia Cube because he's a grown-up Elia Trop. He's used to have that much Wagfu inside him. It's not like Nox, that he was a human and he... Yeah, he was put together thanks to the power of the Elia Cube. He barely was able to control the power of the Elia Cube. No, now this is a different species, a more powerful species from what I have seen. Or perhaps it's just the six originals are the powerful uh, Elia Tropes are, of course, the really, really, really powerful beings. Of course, alongside with the original dragons. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing a cool design and a cool use of his powers. Because yes, he's using to attack and he knows. And he doesn't look tired at all. He looks more, uh, well, dynamic, more aggressive, of course. And unlike uh, unlike the original, uh, I would say original, not, no, original Kilby. So yes, everything is unraveling here. Yes, the quest for the Dofus... 
It's a correct one, but there is a reason behind that quest. He cannot go because Faerys, another original dragon, was going to destroy him. And yes, this speaks volumes of the evil deeds of uh, Kilby. Yes, that's why he cannot go. Yes, he was going to destroy this guy. He was not allowing him to go close to his Dolphus. Again, I don't know if the dragon sister of him is aware of this evil side of Kilby or she's just against it. I am still not sure about that because nothing, nothing has told me that she is with him or she is not with him. So yeah, that is still a mystery. Why he is so desperate to find the egg of uh, his sister, or, well, his own egg with his, with his sister in there. Perhaps this is still a bone that he has with with her, and there is a kind of bond with his people. I am still not sure what to think about Kilby because yeah, this is a very short information we're giving us. Uh, yeah, they speak about going after them, and yes, uh, Kilby will start to attack both. He attack Alamite, he attack uh, Gorgal again. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. Uh, this is kind of a comedic battle. Well, comedic because there is a lot of banter in there. There is a lot of silly stuff. And this is telling me that actually uh, Kill Bill is... Kill Bill, again. Kill Bill is not that great of a warrior. There are more powerful warriors than him. And yes, again, taking pauses into the freaking fight to show us that, yeah, you and Adamai are better warriors. And pauses, uh, pauses, so they let us know that, yes, Yugo is better than him, kind of taunting him. And that, yes, Adama is so proud for, of his brother. But yes, again, this is a weird fight, because we're seeing the true power of an adult Eliatrop. He's capable, just as Anathar, to create several portals at the same time, and of course using every single one of them as a weapon. Uh, of course, the battle continues, and uh, Adamai, and of course, the first one is was Gorgal, uh, they destroy the freaking uh, specimens. Uh, they start to destroy all of them to make uh, to make Kilby angry, and this kind of works for a while. But uh, now, of course, uh, Kilby is taking this fight seriously. He knocks down Gorgal in seconds, and starts to attack... Uh, start to attack Adamai. Yeah, he starts to attack uh, Adamai with a scythe. A scythe made out of wakfu, from what I have seen. And yes, he decided to destroy these. Uh, I think it was cra Crackle, something along those lines. Uh, he started to destroy parts of this monster that Adamai became because he was furious once he saw what happened to Gargle. Yeah, it is it is a neat battle because yeah, you can see that you can see that in this moment uh, that Kilby has full control of it. He knows what he's doing, he's ready to attack this dragon. This not full dragon, of course. And he is powerful enough to finish Adamai Oh, I don't know if he's dead. Hopefully he is not dead. I don't want to Adamai be dead. But yes, this unbelievable battle. Yeah, the laboratory is completely destroyed. But of course, that's not it. It was in this moment, Kill Bill doesn't care about the species that were in his laboratory. He's just attacking Adamai with all he got. And he cuts and this is when I had doubts in my mind that he cut or he looked like he cut the head of Adamai, but the head was intact. But we saw kind of the Wakfu energy from Adamai being caught. And not only that, it was caught and it was absorbed in the side. I don't know what does that mean, but of course it has a meaning because yes, the side uh, go back to the arm of the Wakfu arm of Kilby. I don't know what is going to happen with that, but this is foreshadowing for something. What? I don't know. Hopefully it's going to be foreshadowed that, yes, we can bring back Alamai and everything's going to be okay. Hopefully is that.
this is a very interesting villain because he discovered after of course throwing gargle to the freaking machine i don't know what the hell exactly is that thing but this is kind of a helping moment for a him later on or a realization moment of course we return to hugo that he felt the energy of a well, kind of a disturbance in the energy of WAP. Yeah, it sounds kind of the the force from Star Wars. But anyway, yeah. We return now again with Kilby. This is a scene in which it was kind of weird for me to see it. Because yes, this is kind of one of those extra scenes that we saw at the end of the episode. Uh, the guy trying to destroy the flower, but he doesn't know how to destroy it. So he can have to make it excited or something like that. Along those lines. We now saw that Kilby wants to enter the realm of Rusho, not Stubisho, Rusho. Uh, he is taken to the leader, in this case Rusho, and we saw the destiny of Remy and his brother. That they are slaves to the king of the Shushos. Yes, it's pretty pathetic for Remy and for his brother because, yeah, that is weird to see him so submissive in this case i know why because yeah he's a huge ass demon and yes even another has been punished for i don't know failing or something because he's just uh, with a phone and all that um yeah we saw again kilby uh, presenting himself to Rusho and saying yes this is a dragon he can devour you without even much problems and all that yes help me to destroy a more powerful one And this is again the plan of uh, of Kilby. He doesn't care about this world. He doesn't care about anything here. My guess is he's going to use uh, the energy of this world to uh, fill his machine or fill the LA cube and of course feed the freaking ship. Why? I don't know. He, perhaps he wants to go back to his old planet and recover, or he wants to travel and keep absorbing everything. Is it still not clear what he wants to do after he uh, goes back into a space? But he doesn't care about this world, and just, he's saying that, yes, sure, go ahead, absorb or destroy or whatever, do. It doesn't matter for him because in the end he's going to destroy the world by absorbing all the waifu. So, yeah, it doesn't matter for him. Uh, he offers to open a portal to the demons so they can uh, return to the well realm of the twelve and destroy it. Again, this is a very fishy plan, and everything is telling him or everybody is telling to Russo, in this case Remy and of course Anathar, that this smells fishy. And yes, of course. I don't think uh, Kill will care about anything, so yeah, he's just saying, yeah, sure, I'm gonna give you the world, doesn't matter for me. It's going to be destroyed anyway after I'm finished absorbing the freaking uh, whack from it, so yeah, go ahead. That's something very interesting about Kilby. His transition from being this good guy to this evil guy. It sounds so rushed, but it's not. Anyway, again, we, I'm going to speak about that in the end. We saw, of course, Pompo trying to comfort uh, Hugo because he's not sure of what happened to Adamai. But of course, he knows that something happened to Adamai, but he know he doesn't know exactly what happened to him. And yes, we're seeing that some lessons uh, that Evangeline thought uh, Pompo are still there in his head. So yeah, there is still something inside of uh, Evangeline, inside of uh, Pompon. And yeah, we're closing the episode uh, once uh, we saw, of course, Gargoyle trapped inside this machine, crying for help. This is a very interesting episode. As I said before, I'm going to speak about things that I uh, didn't want to say the first time or interrupt the narration here. Again, Kilby is presented at first as a nice person, as a wise person, as a king. But again, I'm doubting all of that thanks to this episode. 
the design of Kill Bill is to make you feel that way. That you can trust him, he's very soft colors, very uh, soft voice, not very aggressive in any way, shape or form, and is portrayed as the king and a wise man. This is to make you or to lure you in a sense of uh, calmness. Everything of him is that. The way he used the control of his waggle to lure a kid into sleeping, to make a kid sleep, to help others. Yes, we are seeing a very relaxed person in here, very calm person, very rational person. And of course, I'm speaking about this because the transition is not sudden. We're giving clues in previous episodes that this is not a good person. He is not telling you the correct story. He is not telling you the whole story. He is hiding something. Of course, it not say, it's not said outright. It's not all there. No. But it's presented in a way that you do not suspect much. But once you find the reveal of this, it's obvious if you see the last episode. Yes, speaking about the battle against Organax, I'm still doubting how it ended. Yes, perhaps Organax and Hugo and the rest of the Eliatropes and Dragons fought against him and destroyed him. But again, after that, my guess is Hugo and Adamai fought against Kilby. And they sent him into this realm of no time. That's my suspicions here. That in reality, Kilby was crazy before. That he went, okay, yes, we defeat this guy, so let's abandon this place, absorb his work, we'll destroy it completely, and we shall go away. And again, I don't know if when they run away the first time from the uh, Mikasms, they were all alive. Perhaps the only one who survived was Kilby. And the rest were in their ex. But once they figured out that, yes, Kilby has been killing planets and planets and planets, he's saying barren planets when he uh, spoke in the story back then. But I'm again starting to doubt that those were barren planets. They're perhaps full of life and he absorbed every single bit of Wakfu. It doesn't matter the cost for him. So once the other dragons and Elia trolls revive, or were grown enough for him to take decisions, they start to rebuild in this planet. To rebuild the society, and yeah, organize attack, and this gave the excuse of Kilby to say, okay, yeah, it doesn't matter, let's go. We must return, or we must do this, or we must do that. And that's when the rest of the freaking Elia drops decide to attack. That is my theory again. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong. So yeah, Kilby transition to an evil guy is kind of fascinating in this case. It's, it's weird to see him as a villain. Because again, even though we were kind of letting us know that he was a villain or he was not such trustworthy, I never did suspect to this extent. As I said in the reaction, I thought that he wanted to return to his whole planet and he wants to bring Hugo with him. That the real problem were going to be the Rusher, that they will find another way or they kidnap somebody else or they will create a portal or I don't know, something along those lines. But I never suspect him to go full villain. This really caught me by complete surprise in this case. I wasn't expecting something like this. I wasn't, which is a welcome sight because again, the fillers is kind of built up towards this. Now the story is taking full place and I cannot wait for the next episode. Yeah, Cubil is malevolent, man. I never suspected that. 
Again, not to this extent. But anyway, yeah, I think I exhausted the topic of this episode. The only thing I have to say is thank you for your comments, your likes, your views, and your subscriptions. If you want to be a subscriber, click on the button for subscription and on the bell so you can get notifications. If you share this video, that will help me a lot more. And of course, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description below. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for your attention. And well, see you in the next one. Bye.